Welcome. Thank you for joining us today as we open God's Word together. And today we're going to be in Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 7 and 8. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Uh, we are celebrating Memorial Day this weekend. Some of you may be celebrating, um, remembering a loved one that sacrificed their life for their country. Um, some of you may just be celebrating in general for those Americans who gave their lives uh, in service to our country, who sacrificed for us, for the freedoms that we enjoy, uh, for their families, for their loved ones, for their friends, and for their brothers in arms. However you celebrate this weekend, I hope that you will take the, the time to honor those who made that sacrifice. I believe that love is tied to sacrifice, that the Bible reveals true love, godly love, divine love is an unconditional love, but it is also a sacrificial love. And so the men and women who made that sacrifice for our country, we need to honor them. We need to recognize that they loved enough to pay that ultimate price. As we look at the scripture today, I hope that you will be thinking about um, those men and women who made that sacrifice and that you would honor them today. Let's open God's word together and read. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. For, no, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you just go to the very um, the previous verse, verse 6, Paul says, For while we were still helpless, and at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. The unique thing about Jesus' sacrifice is that it was not for good people. It was not for only those that he liked or only those who he thought were good enough. Christ's sacrifice was for the helpless, for the ungodly, for those who did not deserve it. That's what makes his sacrifice so special and so unique. That God's love and God's sacrifice is, is so much greater because he was willing to die and to sacrifice uh, for those who did not deserve it. You and me. Verse 7, Paul says, For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. Paul is not saying that no one is willing to sacrifice for someone else. Um, we know this to be true in, in our own world. Um, there are uh, over 1.8 million purple hearts that have been given uh, to those who have been wounded, uh, killed, or have died uh, in service uh, to their country. Our military is uh, made up of some of the most sacrificial people I've ever met. Um, our military members uh, that are veterans, uh, those who are currently in the military, uh, spent time, uh, grew up with many uh, who serve and who continue to serve in the military, and they are uh, the best of us. They are uh, patriotic. They are uh, Americans that we can all be proud of. And they're willing to die for their fellow servicemen and women. They're willing to protect the freedoms that we enjoy. And so that sacrifice, uh, that willingness to sacrifice is there. Um, however, when it comes to those moments, there aren't a lot of examples where people actually make that sacrifice. People are willing to make a sacrifice, but it's not common. Um, it's, not, it's not something that happens all the time. And that's what Paul says. Paul says, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. He's not saying it's impossible. He's not saying that, that no one would sacrifice for their fellow man. But he said, it's going to be hard to find somebody it's going to be a low percentage of people that will make that sacrifice. And we're talking about people not necessarily in the military. In the military, they're, they're conditioned and trained 
uh, to be self-sacrificing in that way, whereas that's not always the case um, with the general population. And so Paul rightly points out it's, it's rare to find someone uh, who would die for a righteous man. Uh, what Paul is saying is that someone who has good character, who has moral values, who has a good moral compass, who lives uh, righteously, who does the right things, right? This righteous person, he's a good person. You would want to be around him. You would want to um, have him as one of your leaders, as uh, someone who represents uh, humanity well. And yet, it would be rare for someone to sacrifice their life for them. And then he also goes further than that. He says, perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. And uh, we may think when we read it in the English that the righteous man is, is better than the good man. You know, the righteous man is up here and the good man's a little bit less. Uh, no, it's actually reversed. Um, this good man is not only righteous, but he's also kind, loving, considerate. He's the type of person that you want to be around. I know a lot of people who live well, who live righteously, who are moral people, and yet I don't really want to spend much time with them because there's a difference between someone who you immediately know loves you and cares about you and someone who just lives righteously. Uh, and I'm sure you know the difference and have noticed the difference as well. Um, some people you want to be around because you feel better by being around them. They're just good people. And some people are good in the sense that they live right, um, but they don't necessarily have that personality that you want to spend uh, your time with. And they aren't necessarily the giving type of people that um, you would want to associate with. And that's that's this good man, right? And, the, and in comparison to the righteous man, yeah, it'd be more likely that someone would die for a good man uh, because their, um, their worth <laughs> is is more in, in the example that's being used here. But the thing is, uh, that's actually not the case either. Paul says, perhaps for a good man, someone would dare even to die. But what Paul is, is saying here is that it's rare as well. These are two rare circumstances. Someone dying for a righteous man, and it's probably a little less rare, but someone dying for a good man. And that's the amazing thing about Christ's sacrifice. That's what Paul is trying to point out, is that if it's rare for someone to die for a righteous man, if it's rare for someone to die for a really great man, a godly man, a loving man, someone who, who you just want to be around because of how, how awesome they are, then it doesn't quite fit that God would sacrifice for the unrighteous, for the ungodly, for the helpless. That's what makes Christ's sacrifice so amazing and so wonderful, that he is willing, while we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, verse 8 says, God demonstrates his own love toward us. This love, this sacrificial love that God has is something beyond the norm. It's something that's just different. We've seen examples of this um, in history. We've seen people make the ultimate sacrifice of their life. And I believe that people who have done that, those who have uh, served in our military and fought for our country, and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, the ones that we remember on Memorial Day, they get very, very close to this example of Christ. They get very, very close to the sacrificial love that Christ had because many of those people who fought in the wars of our country um, within and without uh, the, those who paid the ultimate price and sacrificed their life in service to our country they did so for strangers they did so for you and me they did so for people they had never even met now they also did it for those that they loved, and they also did it for all the good people, and they, they did it for the ideal and uh, the ideology of America and the freedom that we have here. And so I think they get really, really close to the type of sacrifice that Christ makes. The only difference is Jesus, he knows everybody. He knows how good they are, and the truth is he knows just how bad they are. And yet he still 
was willing to sacrifice. Paul's point is that people will sacrifice, sometimes even the ultimate sacrifice, if the cause is good, if it's for people who are good, if it's for righteous people, if it's for an ideal. But to die for someone who is helpless, for someone who is ungodly, for someone who is a sinner, that's beyond human thinking. That's something that only God could do. And that's the example that Paul gives. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He finishes out um, this thought in verse 11. And not only this, but we also exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The reason why Christ died was so that we could be reconciled to God, the Father. Because God gave his commands and gave his law to humanity. And humanity went against God and divided that relationship between man and God. And Jesus reconciles that relationship between human beings and God. That's why Jesus made the claim, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through me. He is the means of reconciliation between a holy God and a sinner like you and like me. One will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I hope this is encouraging to you on this Memorial Day as we remember those who gave um, their lives for our country, for our freedoms, for the things that we enjoy. Remember Christ who sacrificed his life for not just the things we enjoy, not just loved ones, not just friends, not just those who would be committed to him in relationship, but he died for everyone, made that ultimate sacrifice for the whole world, according to First John and the rest of scripture. So I encourage you, on this Memorial Day, remember the men and women who sacrificed, and remember the God-man Jesus who sacrificed. And thank you for joining us today. Think about this scripture. Think about the sacrifice that Christ was willing to make. And celebrate not only his sacrifice, but those who sacrifice in a very similar way. A sacrifice of love and life. God bless you.